This will tell you, I think we have a problem. Oh, that is a problem. That's unfortunate. All right, folks, welcome back to another adventure in the garage. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Luke and today's video, I'm here to help you sort out all of the different test settings on your new Cronova MS8233 Delta. I'm actually pretty excited about this little meter. There's a couple features that you'll get with this meter that you generally won't get at this price range. And that is mostly going to be your amperage measurement for AC circuits. That's really uncommon at this price range. And also the fact that it's auto ranging is also very uncommon at this price range. And it also has non-contact voltage and live. So I think for the price right now, at the moment of the date of filming this video, this is the best bang you can get for your buck as far as a little digital auto ranging multimeter is concerned. How it performs, I don't know, we'll see. We're gonna go ahead and take it through all the different test settings. We're gonna do practical application testing. So we'll actually use all the functions and then we'll talk about it. And then of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know down in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like. If you found it not very helpful, give me a dislike. I always appreciate the feedback. And let's go ahead and just jump into it. Our first setting here is gonna be for volts DC. A solid in a dash line like that, that's gonna be DC voltage. And then this sine wave here, this little squiggly, that'll be for your AC voltage. And then something that's a little, could be new to you is if you have both a solid and a sine wave, that's telling you that it's rated for both AC and DC. And then you'll see that some of these settings will have like, this one has ohms, diodes, and continuity. You'll use your function button to go ahead and cycle through those different ones. Then you can do manual ranging. There is a min and max, and there is a hold function. Honestly, I almost never use these functions on a meter, but they're there if you need them. And then of course, it's got a backlight. To engage the backlight, you'll wanna just go ahead and hold the backlight button, which is confusing because there's the hold which is to hold your measurements, which is just a quick brief press. And then to hold it is to turn on and off the backlight. So I wish there was a little bit better communication of that function there, but that's how you're gonna go ahead and work that. We also are going to have, it's gonna let us know, hey, you're here to measure DC. And then this negative sign is our polarity indicator basically just the flow of electrons, which way that they're going, which will be important for measuring things like DC circuits. Now notice that that backlight doesn't stay on for very long, which is good for your keeping your batteries lasting a long time. So we could just take a look. If I'm gonna measure a DC circuit, I'm gonna do red to red, black to black, and we're showing 11.98 there on the little screen. So I've got a 12 volt source and then something that we can do. So I'm gonna change the output voltage to something really small and see how the meter responds. Wow, that responds actually really well. The auto ranging feature of this is working great. Now take note, this isn't saying 33 volts. It's gonna change your units down here in the bottom right to millivolts. That is 0 0.033 volts or 33 millivolts, if that makes sense. I know it can be a little confusing if you're new to it. With some practice, you'll get the hang of it. Let's go ahead and move on to our volts AC. The polarity of our leads is not gonna be critical because the voltage and current moves back and forth. So you can do red to hot or neutral, or black to hot and neutral, 121 volts. And then you have a lightning bolt there indicating, hey, this is a live AC circuit. So please be careful, it is live electricity, so always be careful, but if I go ahead and switch the polarity of my test leads, you're gonna see that we get the same measurement regardless. All right, on to the fun stuff. Let's take a look at resistance, diode, and continuity. It should default to your resistive measurement. Just got some resistors here, but any electrical load is gonna have some level of resistance. And we can just see how the auto ranging is gonna do. This is saying 99 ohms, and then over here, one mega ohm. So keep an eye out, again, for your units on this right-hand side. The capital M is from mega, so think million. 
So this is saying 1,046,000 ohms. If you see a K, K is for kilo, and that'll be for thousands, 9.96 K ohms is 9,960. Something to be mindful of, especially with an auto ranging meter, sometimes it can bite you if you're not paying attention to that. Let's go ahead and hit our function button. So next it's gonna go to our diode setting. That's what that little arrow with the line is. We've got two different diodes. Now when we're making a measurement of a diode, we always wanna measure our diode in both directions. We should be seeing the voltage drop across the diode and we do. When we're measuring our diode, we're looking for five to 800 millivolts of voltage drop across our diode. And then if we test it in the opposite direction, we should see probably an OL, exactly. And that means that it can't flow in the other direction. Another little test I always like to do on these meters is to see if it can light a white LED and it can, and it's showing us our forward voltage. So it's saying it takes 2.6 volts to light this LED. Pretty cool, and it's nice and bright. Next is gonna be continuity. So continuity is just gonna emit a tone when there's flow of electrons. And then there's generally a threshold. A general rule of thumb is like, if there's less than 10 ohms of resistance in the circuit, then it should emit a tone, letting you know there's continuity through that circuit. So it's great for like, Figuring out which wires go where. Okay, so we know the black wire and not to this terminal. We can do to red. Red doesn't go here, but it does go there and we can hear that tone. So this is just with two wires. That's pretty easy, a nice little check. But especially when you start to have 10, 20, 30 wires, automotive wiring, it can be good for that. Or if you're poking around in the walls of your house, which you probably shouldn't be doing, but you probably are anyways, that can be Great for that. So there's actually a few accessories that this meter comes with, which is really impressive for this price range. I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything like that. So it's just a random pick off of Amazon. It does come with a nice matching carrying case, which is nice and solid, which is great if you keep this like in the RV or the truck or anything like that. But it also comes with a separate set of alligator leads that are built in. Often when we have alligator lead sets come with meters, they're set up like this. They're like a slip-on style. And these aren't necessarily ideal because they don't always make the best contact with our lead ends. So to have ones that are built in is just a great little accessory that comes with this meter. So I was pretty excited about that. Next up, we're gonna have capacitance. Make sure whenever, no matter what meter, no matter what tester, no matter what it is, we always want to discharge our capacitor I think it's recommended like a 10K ohm resistor is ideal for like a, a slower dissipation of the capacitor, or you could short it out. It's really your preference. And then what we're gonna do is we'll put the red lead to positive, which is not marked, and then our black lead to negative, which is marked. And then it's gonna take a minute to charge it, and then it's gonna give us a value back that should be within a certain percentage of the value on the capacitor itself. Point six three six millifarads. So I think that's 635 microfarads. And then you can always hit the hold button. Let's try to move up here like this. This is where those alligator clamp leads would come in handy. We can hit that hold button and I'll save that value for us. We'll wanna make sure to discharge our capacitor after we've charged it up before we start handling it. Okay, and this capacitor is rated for 680 microfarads. That's within 10%. There is a lot more to capacitor testing. For capacitor testing, for like real capacitor testing, you'll wanna look into an ESR meter and that measures the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor, which is a much more valuable measurement in terms of the health of the capacitor because it can still measure good capacitance but still have poor equivalent series resistance, if that makes sense. So if you're looking on to do more capacitive testing, or if that's one of the reasons why you got this, I would look into getting an ESR meter such as this one. They're pretty inexpensive, uh, and it's a nice little addition to your electrical testing tool set. Next, we're gonna have Hertz and duty cycle. Duty cycle is expressed as a percentage, 
we can see that it's gonna default to hertz. And hertz is the amount of times something turns on and off in one second. This meter outputs a little square wave so we can measure its hertz and duty cycle. So this is saying, okay, 47 times per second, the little square wave outputted by this turns on and off. And then if we hit our function, that's gonna give us a duty cycle percentage. That means that it's on, when it does turn on, it's on for 50% of the time, and then it's off for 50% of the time. So that's why it's, you see a percentage for the expression of duty cycle. So I hope that makes sense. There are two values to that. It can be handy for if you start to get into like more pulse width modulated controlled like motors and little robotics and stuff like that. That can be a really handy feature and for some of your automotive testing can be handy. And next up, we've got all of our amperage measurements. So this is when we're gonna start to want to pay attention to our ports and what they are rated for. So we can see this port is rated for 600 milliamps max, and this port is rated for 10 amps. So most of the time, your red lead is going to be in this port. Occasionally, you're gonna move it over to this port only to make measurements of current in series with the circuit. Now be careful, because when you start moving this lead around, you can start to damage things. And that's why they're fused ports, but uh, you can blow the fuse in your meter or you can damage whatever you're measuring. So this is when you wanna start being careful. We'll make some, some in-series measurements. We're gonna start big and work our way small. So this is gonna be for our t up to 10 amp setting. This'll be for our milliamps and we'll use that port for milliamps, no more than 600 milliamps. And then this funky looking U here is microamps and then again, these three current measurement settings are rated for both AC and DC. Let's take a, uh, I wanna do an AC current measurement and I wanna see how accurate it is compared to like another meter because it's so rare at this price point to get one that is rated for AC current measurements. It's kind of exciting, honestly. I'm pretty pumped. And it's funny because my last the last video that I did, I was like, oh, you know, AC current's not, you're not gonna get that at this price range. Well, I guess now you can. So I gotta be careful about saying stuff like that. So in series measurement, what does that mean? That means that I'm gonna be using basically the meter leads as jumper wires to complete the circuit and allow the current to flow through the meter and that's how it's gonna measure it. Got everything set up correctly, right ports, all the good stuff, and let's take a measurement. Ah, function, okay. We have to let it know that we're taking an AC current measurement or else it's not gonna be accurate. Okay, so this is saying 200 milliamps. So we could do this on the milliamp setting if we wanted to. Let's compare it to just another meter really quick. Cool, I don't know how well you can see that. 216, I'd say that's pretty darn accurate for uh AC current measurement, very exciting. We'll do some DC current measurements as some examples. For DC, we've got our black as our common, right? And then I'm just gonna put our positive off to the side. So we got everything still in the right ports and change our function to let it know that we're taking, it's showing Hertz as we go through our function menu. That's really interesting. It doesn't have it displayed here, but it also display Hertz as you're making a measurement. So very cool. So something that we can do is we can just do this light bulb. If you're testing like a headlight, we can see it pulls two amps. And then we have like our motor here. And that's gonna pull 400 milliamps. Making current measurements can always be interesting because I think the actual amount of current that you think something is using versus the amount that it's actually using. Now keep in mind, this motor is unloaded and it's rated for eight amps. It's unloaded, that's why it's only 400 milliamps, but still, I mean, compared to this light bulb, I've got um, some resistors. We'll use those resistors again. Resistors are great for small loads. And it's great too if you're learning like Ohm's law, 
Resistors will work perfectly with Ohm's law. We'll keep it on the 10 amp for now and we'll verify that whatever we're doing is not gonna exceed the 600 milliamps that, that it's rated for. No, not even close. Okay, so we can go to how little it current it was pulling. That's where these smaller measurements can come in handy. This is pulling 124 milliamps, 0.124 amps, right? And then for this one, 12 milliamps. And then over here, 1.18, 19 milliamps. So then we have a microamp setting and that's going to change our unit again. And that's saying, hey, this is 1,189 microamps that it's pulling. So having a microamp setting for measuring really small currents accurately is actually pretty impressive for a meter like this. And then finally we have non-contact voltage and live. Let's set this up so we can show that it's a live circuit. So you can see the bars are indicating the strength and there is a tone being produced. That's pretty cool. This meter is like, like $22 or something right now. That's insane. And I'm not the biggest fan of the non-contact voltage. I do like the live and the live is pretty cool. It's becoming a lot more common and I like it because it's a lot more accurate. Basically, you're just gonna use one lead in your voltage port. I use the function button to get it over to live. This will tell you I think we have a problem. Oh, that is a problem, that's unfortunate. So the way this is, this function's intended to work, and it doesn't on this, which is a real shame, the way this is intended to work is that your lead, you have one lead just into your volts port, and only when you touch something that's live, the meter will go off, as opposed to the non-contact, which is kind of just like in the area, and that can be really confusing, especially if you're new on what's gonna be your live and what isn't. And so when you have it in the live function, this lead should be going off right now because that is hot. There is voltage right there on anything. Man, that was so close. Always be careful when using those functions though. They can always give you false positives and false negatives. That's why I think it's always best practice the way that I was taught is to always use the voltage setting of your meter and actually measure the voltage present. Now that can start to get more complicated. It is live electricity. So you always wanna be careful. So anyways, there you go. Thank you for joining me in another adventure in the garage. That is the Cronova auto ranging multimeter. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know if it was helpful. And I'll catch you all in the next one.